Welcome to another episode of WJAG TV. This week we partake in the festivities of the Battle of the Bands with Angela Gunnerman, enjoy a musical student spotlight on Savannah Barnett, and become better acquainted with co-interim principals at Cedar Shows. My name is Aaliyah Nile. And I'm Michael Nezwicky Castile. And this is WJAG TV with your weekly school news. <laughs> This past Saturday, Ansley Gunderman attended the third annual Battle of the Bands, sponsored by our very own journalism Booster Club, which showcases high school bands around Athens. Here's Ansley with more. The Cedar Shoals Journalism Program presented the third annual Athens Area High School Battle of the Bands this past Saturday at the 40 Watt Club downtown. Six local high school bands battled it out for the chance to win the grand prize of a recording session at a local studio, Tweed Recording, as well as have their song played on Bulldog 93.3 FM. The way that Athens got its music scene started, like the way we sort of became a classic music town is through young musicians. Athens has a lot of young, talented people, and a lot of times they don't get shown that they, and I think they need to be. I think it's important just to, you know, cultivate a new generation of musicians in town. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Athens has a great music legacy, and it's great to have a new generation that's up to date with the genres. People to like accept these kids as like real musicians, because we really are. If someone came to see Swaus and they saw like five other really sick bands, then they have other bands that they like. Like it, it gives people a chance to see what else is out there. Everyone can at least agree that the importance of supporting events like this, as well as getting the opportunity to learn and empower groups and individuals in our community is necessary and key for the development and understanding of the young music scene blooming in our city. I feel like there's a community here with the people who are playing and this is a time for them to show off and be proud of what they do. Bands can be really supportive of each other as they should be um, while remaining in competition in a way, but um, I'd say that ultimately this fosters more of a um, more of a community of support than anything else. To be in a band with your friends uh, at a young age and be able to have a bunch of people come to your shows, that's really cool. I think it's just super cool that um, young people are just pursuing like what they love and their passions. And I think it's just amazing that we can all come out and like support one another um, and just be a part of something that's just so fun. Through music, those on stage can hopefully inspire their fans to explore their passions and follow their dreams. People like who are like aspiring just to like be in bands or be in music or just like anything else, they can see other people like their age doing what they love and it definitely encourages them to like pursue like whatever their passion is. For the observers it's it's the fact that you can do it, like you can be in a band if you want to. Because it kind of inspires all these like younger generations of musicians to like keep going and keep at it. It's very important for young people, adolescents, young adults to be able to express themselves creatively. It's very healthy um, and that's where all the best creative sort of flows and ideas come from. As the competition came to an end, Fishbug won first place with second going to Pearl and Noise in the Judge's Choice category, and A.D. Blanco took the crown for Crowd's Choice, along with the opportunity for the recording session. For WJG TV, this has been Anza Gunnerman. Wow, I really should have attended this year. I totally agree, Leah. It looks as if the Battle of the Bands was another success. Join us next year for more live entertainment. There have been public concerns about who would be in charge until there was adequate and competent leadership for the future of Cedar Shows. Here's Amani Foot with more information on our co-interim principals. With the previous principal Derek Maxwell leaving on October 29th, assistant principals Derek Hart and Carter have been working hard to support the school and make the school environment flow as if he was still here. This is my 12th year at Cedar Shoals High School. Um, this is my fifth year as an administrator. I've been at Cedar Shoals for three years now. First position, I was actually half time between assistant principal and athletic director. I have considered being the principal at Cedar Shoals High School. Since I've been here, we had Principal Deanne Veritek and Mr. Maxwell. I am 
very interested in becoming a principal here in Clark County. Uh, I'm not sure about Cedar Shoals High School. That's ultimately the decision of the uh, superintendent and his cabinet. Well, more than anything, rather than just looking at things to fix, we want to take a comprehensive look at what are we doing now. Um, so with that being said, we just try to look at everything we have in place now, see how we can make it better and or change some of the things. Uh, one of the biggest things that we've tried to implement since Dr. Maxwell or Mr. Maxwell left, we've tried to um, shore up some things in terms of attendance in class, making sure that hallways are clear, and just making sure that students realize, as well as teachers, that school is still going on. Uh, I was excited. Uh, it was a great opportunity. Uh, one of the things I enjoy the students as well as the teachers and support staff at the school so I figured it was a great opportunity for me to just try to show who I truly am and try to be able to give back to this community and the school. Uh, the first the first emotion that ran through me was uh, excitement. I was very, very excited, um, but I was also humbled um, because I have put a lot of effort into um, Cedar Shows and I've poured out my heart and soul to Cedar Shows for the past 12 years. And it was uh, it was humbling and it's also gratifying to know that the school is in good hands under my leadership and under the leadership of Mr. Derrickite as co-interim principals. Students feel like the administrative control has shifted since Maxwell departed from the school. Um, I, I knew about all of those rules. I just feel like Cedar really didn't enforce them like they said they were. So generally everybody's going to ignore it because usually they don't enforce it, enforce it like how they say they are. Yeah, I feel like they're doing their best, but I just feel like as soon as he left, they were trying to make a statement that oh they're the principal now and they're trying to reinforce these rules or create new rules to make the school a better place but it should have been like that from the beginning. Teachers have incredibly high hopes for the two new interim principals. Uh, I've known them both for a while and um, hopefully they're going to do a very good job. Um, I'm glad that it's both of them not just one. I think one if it was just one of them with none, neither one of them having any principal experience would be overwhelming. I think he had a very positive impact on the morale of the school. The kids seemed to really like him, teachers seemed to get along well with him. He supported our teachers here. Uh, I would say that people felt comfortable going to him. There wasn't any fear of any of anything, I think teachers and students felt like they could go to him uh, regarding any situations they had and he would be fair about how they were handled early and so it's hard to say that there's been changes immediately um, there's been some announcements that have been different and those kinds of things but uh, change takes time and I think that was the problem uh, change was not taking uh, was not happening quick enough for the district um, when Dr. Maxwell was here this has been a money foot from Jack TV news signing off I'm glad that Long Cedar is going through its transition stage. We have competent and compassionate leadership set in place. You're definitely right about that. It's important that we stand on a strong foundation as we go through this transition. Talent is not very hard to find, especially if you're looking right in the halls of our very own school. Savannah Barnett is a drama student and a part-time vocalist. Here's Ethan Rice with more. Many creative and talented students at Cedar, including 10th grader Savannah Barnett. She has a passion for expressing herself through singing and acting. Yes, I've been singing for as long as I can remember. Um, so, like, I would sing around the house all the time growing up because I'm kind of like part of a musical family. So, music has just kind of always been a part of what we do. Um, and I started playing guitar when I was nine, I think. Singing is one of those things that just comes really naturally to me. Like, how sometimes you talk to yourself or you just kind of. I don't know, I guess that's the best thing I can describe it to. It's just kind of second nature to sing. Um, and playing is really therapeutic. Just like being able to like sit down with an instrument and play around with it is very like relaxing. So. Um, I post covers on my Instagram. I used to not really do it, but I've been trying to like go out of my comfort zone because I'm usually really shy about singing. So I've been posting covers a lot more lately. I think my favorite artist and an artist that inspires me or artists that inspire me a lot are the Staves. Um, they're a group based in London, I think, um, and their music is beautiful. A lot of it is like acoustic, it's kind of like folky, um, 
and I it's just it's beautiful and I really like it's a group of sisters um, and I just really like what they do with their voices and you know all of their songs tell a story so I think if I made my own music I would want it to sound like theirs I do theater too I've been doing theater that's actually yeah I've been doing theater since I was like four so that's always been a hobby of mine Although it is only Savannah's first year here at Cedar Shoals, she has been very welcomed in by the community and has made several connections through the theater program. One of those connections is Audrey Bennett, a senior at Cedar Shoals. Savannah is new to Cedar, um, but she's making a big name for herself. Like She's been doing a lot of things with drama, and she's been networking and you know making some friends, and I'm one of them. And she's just super nice, she's super open, she's easy to talk to. Uh, she's like fitting in really well, which is pretty pretty good because you know like going to a new school can be really tough and like her coming here and it's, it's just been good. She's been fun. She's a fun gal. After speaking with a few other fine arts students, many would like to pursue a career related to the class which brought the interview to the head of the drama department, Rosemary Millsap, with some advice. Um, do your research. Find out um, what training you need, what schools would be the best schools to go to. Those schools may not be in Georgia, so that's something sometimes in those specific areas you have to look a little further and wider. Um, uh, music therapy and um, musical theater therapy and drama therapy and all the acting therapies, all those types of therapies are really neat, increasing um, available uh, type of therapy that's out there that I find fascinating but I don't actually know anything about as far as like what people uh, what programs people pursue to get there but I think it's a really worthwhile profession to go after and something that we're going to see more of in future generations. Savannah hopes to be able to be a musical educator or work with music and therapy. This has been Ethan Rice for WJATV Student News. It's always awesome to discover talent in your own school. You keep singing, Savannah, and perfecting your craft. Now, now to sports. sports. <laughs> Welcome to WJAG TV Sports News. I'm Sage Mellon, and joining me is Tristan Langford. Quincy Canty is one of the most impressive basketball players that we've ever seen here at Cedar Shoals. Him and his talent-filled roster are hoping to go get a state title this year. We got a chance to talk to Quincy to talk about his collegiate hopes and also going to the pros one day. This is going really good so far. I'm 19 and one. It's been probably the best it's, it's ever been since I've been here. Uh, we've been, you know, getting a lot of stuff done. Everybody's getting better. The confidence is getting, you know, is getting better. Everybody's really willing to do whatever it takes to win and go all the way. So that's, you know, it's a really good thing to be a part of. Right now, we're focusing on defense because, you know, the term everybody uses for any sport is defense wins championships. So, you know, doing everything defensively, working on our two three zone defense, man to man. Just making sure that you know we everything that we run in the game, all our offense when we run it is nice and crisp, without any mistakes, no turnovers, and just making sure that everything as far as what we do in the game is smooth. Everything is just natural. Well, one thing I'm proud of myself individually is that I didn't really think I was going to get as many get recruited as heavy as I am right now. Like there's a lot of schools been recruiting me and it's continuing as you know as the season goes on, and just uh, I think. Me playing the leader has really gotten better, you know, getting all the young guys ready for when we leave and make sure that they know what to do when they become seniors and, uh, you know, just leaving a, a huge mark. But since the season has started, at least seven schools have started to recruit me. And hopefully before the season ends, we can get an offer. I can get an offer from all of them, then I'll probably have probably about, like, 12. But one offer that stands out is probably both St. John's and Tennessee State. Cause St. John's is just a really good, well-known school. It's just a big school, good, good for basket, well-known for basketball. And uh, military, and Tennessee State is, you know, it stands out because, you know, that's just one of the probably the best, or HBCUs that there is. 
And then they've been they've been really like heavily recruiting me. They've been texting me, calling me. I've been calling them, texting them. Just making, you know, they just been keeping a relationship, you know, between me and them. They keep they've been keeping it solid. So I feel like if I were to go there, I'd be comfortable going there. If I put in enough of hard work and I, uh, you know, really stay committed to it, I probably could see myself playing pro, whether it be overseas, G League, NBA, just anywhere professional where I can make money for doing what I like to do. Yeah, so. I can see myself there, going there in five years. James Zhao is a freshman at Cedar Shoals with a promising swim career ahead of him. Despite him being very young, he's in the running for qualifying for multiple state events in swim. Um, I've been swimming for five years, um, starting this year. So like five years from when I was eight. Yeah. I think what influenced me to start was just seeing like Michael Phelps and all the big swimmers on TV during the Olympics um, in 2008. I saw them and I wanted to be like them when I grew up. All I did was just go to practice every day and try my hardest and that's what got me here. Okay, so meets this season, uh, they've actually gotten more challenging because when I swim, like, I start to get tired more easily for some reason. But even then, I still feel like there are some days where it's just bad overall. But like, other than that, meets have been pretty good. Because they have a definite height advantage over me and more years of experience, but I feel like I can, when I'm a senior, I can, I'll be the same. My favorite event is probably the 50 free, probably because the shortest event, I'm a sprinter, so. Uh, and um, I just feel like I'm pretty good at it. My 50 free time is a 22.41. School swimming is a lot different because there seems to be way more people in these meets. And, but I don't really go to practice that often for school swimming though, so I can't really say anything about practice. My first goal for the future is to make the nationals team. And then hopefully after that, when I go to college, hopefully become an Olympian. And sometimes I'm trying to go for is uh, to go under 21 in my uh, 53, so I can make uh, nationals. Best advice is probably to like, um, when you're, when you're uh, first starting, it doesn't matter if you're slow. Just keep training and training, and then you'll get to the point where you'll be really fast, like where I'm at, uh, where I'm at now. That wraps up WJAG TV Sports News. Now back to the studio. Well, that concludes this week's news. We'll be back next week with all new stories about Cedar Shoals Jaguars and the East Side community. My name is Aaliyah Nile. And I'm Michael Nitzwicky Castile. And this has been WJAG TV with your weekly school news.